Hello world, it is Thursday, August 27th, 2020. It is a warm and muggy morning again in Defiance. I did not go outside. I was going to ride my bike today, but my legs were feeling kind of tired, so I just stayed in and did some upper body and core exercises. I just do something different, give my body a break. And I did not sleep well last night for some reason. I had a hard time falling asleep. I woke up several times through the night. I don't know if it's all that's going on in this world um, or what's going on, but um, I was just tired this morning. The devotion for today is Concerns and Condolences, written by Kenneth Samuel. Kenneth bases his devotion on Exodus 2.25. In the New International Version. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Kenneth writes, Many Americans celebrate the lives and mourn the passing of three human rights champions in the persons of Reverend Cordy Tyndall Vivian, Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry, and Congressman John Lewis. Condolences and heartfelt expressions of concern for the families of these civil rights icons have been conveyed from governmental agencies and from people around the nation. In tribute to the long-standing public service of John Lewis, President Trump ordered the United States flag be flown at half-staff. Tributes, condolences, and warm words are wonderful ways to express gratitude and show respect for those who made great sacrifices to make America a more perfect union of democracy and equal opportunity. But they are not the best ways. While concerns and condolences pour in, to honor the nonviolent fight for justice waged by these humanitarian warriors, gun reform legislation aimed at mitigating the wanton pervasiveness of firearms in America is still stalled in the U.S. Congress. And while the blood of John Lewis played a key role in the passage of the Voting Rights Act, the key components of that act are now on life support, leaving the door wide open for sustained voter suppression. Exodus 2.25 tells us that when God looked upon the suffering of the Hebrews enslaved in Egypt, God was concerned. And God's concern was realized in the commissioning of Moses and the exodus of the Israelites. A more pertinent translation of Exodus 2.25 is from the New Living Translation. God looked down upon the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. Lord, our condolences, Kenneth's prayer. Lord, our condolences into commitment. Try that again. Lord, turn our condolences into commitment <clears throat> and our concerns into action. Amen. Damn, maybe the heart at <clears throat> the heart of what this uh, devotion gets at may be one of the reasons I was having trouble sleeping last night. <clears throat> it's like the old, every time there's been a um, mass shooting, and there hasn't been one that I've heard of in quite a while, uh, many politicians talk about thoughts and prayers. And thoughts and prayers don't really go very far without commitment and action in the world. The two go hand in hand. That's true of any life of faith. You can pray all you want. You can be as pious as you want. But unless you're actually living your faith in the world, nothing's really going to change. So that's something we have to do, I think, is to uh, look at how we can live our faith in the world every day. How we can center everything we do around loving God above all else and loving our neighbor as ourselves. There's far too much violence in this world. And then that violence begets more violence as people get angry over the violence. I think of the, the shooting deaths of, um, of unarmed black people and then the rioting that occurs and more shooting. That occurs when armed white civilians take it upon themselves to try to become police officers or enforcers of the law just stoking the violence even more. Something has to change. And it's not going to change just with thoughts and prayers. It's only going to change with action. 
So I hope, I hope you can turn your thoughts and prayers into action in some way and do what you can to help turn this tide around because we desperately need it. Take care and I'll try to talk to you again tomorrow.